While new research shows that eating organic foods can make people more arrogant and judgmental. In fact, eating just one handful of organic bean sprouts has the same effect as driving a thousand miles in a Prius. That is good. The G-Man is back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the G. Gordon Lady Show. You're listening to Horace Cooper uh, sitting in for the G-Man today. I am the humble G-Man in training. Please call us today at 1-800-GG-LIDDY. Um, we're going to be uh, bringing up a great guest, uh, the General Counsel of the National Center for Public Policy Research, um, Justin Danhoff. Uh, if you want to check out their website, I recommend you go to the www. Dot nationalcenter.org. This group, they have their uh, fingers in so many different things. It's really, really exciting to see the kinds of work that they do. Uh, and uh, in full disclosure, I do some work with them as well. It's uh, really exciting to have uh, Justin Danoff on. Uh, how are you doing today, Justin? I'm doing well, Horace. I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Great. I wanted to talk with you a little bit about the Retail Industry Leaders Association. You know, a lot of our conversation earlier on the program has been about how uh, leaders, some self-appointed like at the United Nations, but others uh, like the Obama administration and their bureaucrats, dictate to the American people what they're going to do, how they're going to do, making decisions for them, preventing options and choices for them. But apparently, you guys are on track where there's sort of a private sector effort to try to do the very same thing. Tell me about what uh, REAL is up to, the Retail Industry Leaders Association. Sure. Well, it came to our attention earlier this year that Rila issued a their first ever sustainability report. And for those who don't know, uh, Rila is one of the country's largest trade organizations. They represent over 200 companies, and including some of America's largest retail chains, such as Target, Walmart, JCPenney, and so on down the list. And in this sustainability report, they mandate for and lobby for and push their members to do things um, such as reduce their carbon footprint, reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. They also set up um, sustainability standards for labeling, for packaging, for raw material usage, for transportation, for square footage usage, for wattage usage in the stores. And this and is so, so wonderful. Is this is so wonderful for all the consumers. It it lowers prices. It makes products more widely available. <laughs> Isn't that right? Not quite. So what we've been doing at the National Center through our Free Enterprise Project is I've been traveling all across the country the last month and a half or so, going into the belly of the beast and attending the shareholder meetings of companies like Target, like CVS. This morning I was just at Bed Bath and Beyond been to JCPenney, Gap, and what I've been doing is I've been talking to their CEOs directly um, and asking them, essentially, can you describe to me why you're pushing sustainability programs and what effects they have on your three major constituencies, that being shareholders, customers, and suppliers? Because in our opinion, if you're running around promoting all these European-style green programs, what's that going to do? That's going to jack up costs for customers at the uh, register. That's going to increase costs to suppliers and harm um, specifically smaller suppliers who can't meet the new cost requirements. And then the shareholders, because what is this going to do to the bottom line of the company? So I've been traveling across the country, attending meetings, and asking corporate leaders if they'll show some transparency describe to their shareholders, who are the true owners of public companies, by the way, what exactly this sustainability push is doing to the bottom line of their company. Now, if you're a leading retailer, aren't those three stakeholders the primary uh, influences that you should be responding to? Absolutely. And so what this is showing us um, is that in some corporate cultures, the idea of ideology is now replacing better business practice. So a, so, a bottom line that's less uh, costs higher at the, um, at the checkout stand and um, an impact on smaller businesses in America, making them less able to participate in, in the American marketplace, is 
doesn't seem to be a marketplace agenda. This seems to be some kind of a left-wing progressive agenda that isn't concerned about any of those things. Right. I mean, you can't turn on a television set these days and see a commercial that doesn't have this new corporate buzzword of sustainability. And our major concern as a free market think tank is that this is going to harm two major segments of the economy. A, consumer spending, because prices are going to be higher, and consumer spending is a big driver in the American economy. And B, hiring, because the smaller suppliers that are set up here in America, they won't be able to compete in this new world of, you know, they're going to have to increase their compliance staff for all see, of this see, see, Justin, they're going to have to use different materials. They're gonna have Justin, different this packages. is where you're wrong. Unemployment is so great right now. Anybody who wants to get a job can get a job. What, there shouldn't be any problem if we add a couple more burdens on. And the economy is going so strong, people are going to just buy, buy, buy. You could raise the prices a few cents. I think Hillary Clinton, when she was running for president, once said, you know, you just add that to your bottom line. It'll be easy. This is a great idea. <laughs> well, you and I both know that she was wrong, and Nancy Pelosi saying things like increased unemployment benefits are the way to spur the economy is foolish, foolish thinking. Well, it looks to me like we got to keep our eye out on this Retail Industry Leaders Association. If they're going around saying it's a great idea to um, make it cost more for us to go shopping at Target or any of the other big uh, box retailers, and if they're telling shareholders, don't worry if it's going to cost you less, uh, if, if, if the shares are going to go down in value, um, and if they're also saying, by the way, you know, if you're an American provider, we don't care, we can just go to another country, probably a place where they don't keep good records about sustainability, and we'll get our business from them better. Uh, I don't know that that's a, a really a good group to be uh, uh, directing organizations. I wonder, what's the Chamber of Commerce thinking about an organization like this? That's a great question. And the other, the other thought that I've been leaving these CEOs with is the idea of choice. And I'll give you one example. If I'm looking for a new car, I can go to a Toyota dealership and I can pay more for a Prius. Right. If I think that that's, you know, something that I believe in. But All right. if I don't, I can just buy a Camry. So There we go. And that is the solution. That's the solution, choice. You're listening to the G. Gordon Lady program. We're going to have to take one more break for that uh, opportunity to bring in some of those uh, commercial retailers we were just talking about. Uh, call in at 1 800 GG Liddy. Thanks again, Justin. Always enjoy getting a chance to hear uh, the projects you're working on. Thanks, Doris.